welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. We're actually going to talk about a really cool event coming up in the town of Old Saybrook. And with me to talk about this really cool event, I'm not alone tonight. I've got a panel of experts. <laughs> so we're going to actually going to introduce the panel of experts and we're going to talk about an upcoming event. So good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How is everybody? Good. All, All right. Good. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about who you are and then we'll talk, start talking about the event. Uh, my name is Owen Green. I'm a senior at Old Saybrook High School okay. and one of the project coordinators for the Barking Market, which is our event. All right. Uh, I'm Robert Gaden. I'm also a senior at Old Saybrook High School. I'm also a project coordinator for the Barking Market. All right. And Madam on the end, who are you? My name is Lauren Liesenfeld. I'm the executive director for the Riedel and Cody Fund. Okay. And we are very proudly the recipient of the donations that come from the Barking Market. All right, so we're gonna let's talk about the idea of the event and where it came from. I guess how did you guys figure out what you wanted to do as far as an event for the Barkey Market? So basically, our school requires us to do a senior project, right? And me and Rob are both very passionate about animals and especially dogs. We both have dogs in our house. Yeah. Um, and we also have. Both of our families have been touched by cancer, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So we have that kind of connection to cancer and dogs. Okay. And we wanted to try to see how we could incorporate them together and oh. get the community involved. And how, I guess, how, how, off, how long did it take for you guys to plan your event? It started last end of last summer. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's been a while. We put a lot of planning, work, and hopefully in the end it comes out to be good. I guess, I guess the I guess the, the the other question is is when is the event? The event is May seventh, okay. from eleven to four. Mm -hmm. It's rain or shine, so please come. And where is the event? It's Fire. at Fireman's Field. Fireman's Field, or okay. Clark's Field. Yep. Mm -hmm. In Old Saybrook. In Old Saybrook. Over on Elm, Elm Street. Yep. Right, right next to the Two ten Elm. Yep. Yep. Right off exit 60, 67 on I ninety five. Yeah, definitely. And as far as the event goes, what types of, what, I guess, what can the day bring about the event? What can people expect to see, expect to do when they show up? So basically, it's kind of like a lively outdoor, like, flea market thing, but it's okay. more geared towards pet animals and pet lovers and the pets themselves. Really? Yeah, we have, um, so at the event, for example, we have like a lot of vendors, mm -hmm. food trucks, live demonstrations, workshops, um, guest speakers. Okay. And also we're selling a lot of like toys for pets and shirts for people, just Very for everyone nice. basically. Now, Lauren, let's talk a little bit about the aspect of spe the people that are coming to speak. Your, your spe your, I, I want to I call it a speaker's bureau, which Okay. Yeah, no, they have, we have extraordinary speakers coming. Who's coming to speak? We have um, Rick Woodford, who okay. is an author, wrote, he's written two books. The first one is called Feed Your Best Friend Better. Okay. Just came out with a new book called Chow. And he also started authoring books on uh, different kinds of food for your pets that are healthier than, let's say, the grocery store brands that you might buy if you walk into Stop and Shop. Mm -hmm. And he started this because his dog had cancer. Okay. So he was kind of a natural fit for this event, and uh, the guys came up with a few ideas of you know potential people that would be good speakers, and his name came up. We were very fortunate. I reached out to him, and he's flying in. He lives in Oregon. Okay. So the event space uh, right across from Pasta Vida in Old yeah. Saybrook, yeah, sure. there's a banquet facility with a really nice commercial kitchen. Yes, there is. And Rick will be giving demonstrations on you know how to make dog treats or dog food, different dog food. So he's doing a great workshop. Really? Yeah, on, um, on just cooking as well as signing his book. OK. And then we have Chris Ginelli from the Simon Foundation. He's both. He's the director of the or a director of the Simon Foundation, and he's also uh, the executive director of the Canine Behavior Studies Group, and he's going to give this, uh, just a half an hour talk on dog behavior. Is you know how to read your dog, so to speak. Right. And we have some other fascinating speakers. Um, a couple on acupuncture for your dog. Some on using. Um, essential oils to help with your dog with health issues as well as health and well just health and wellness so they've come they've really come up with a nice 
a well-rounded group of speakers that will be, you know, nothing too long, but you know, right. I'd say 20 minutes, 30 minutes. All right, yeah. just, just, just the amount, perfect amount of time to yeah. listen to somebody speak, because yeah. I, know, yeah. I know with me, that's probably my, my attention span, yeah. <laughs> sitting, sitting, listening to somebody. It's like, okay, hmm. Okay. So what other community outreach did you guys do for the, for the event coming up? Um, as of right now, we started to hand out flyers. Okay. Um, obviously, right now on your show, we're trying to get the word out. Hopefully there you, there you go. <laughs> we're trying to work with also like the high schoolers and all the middle schoolers, try and get them involved, see if any of them maybe want to volunteer, come help at the event, or even just come to the event to support it. So we're just trying to reach out to as many people as possible. I was gonna, that, that was actually gonna, as far as the day of the event goes, are you guys always looking for volunteers just oh, yeah. to come out? Absolutely, as, absolutely. as many course. people as we can get to help out is more beneficial. Okay, okay. And again, if, if people want more information on the event or they wanna sign up to volunteer, should, should they just? They can go to the website. Yeah. Okay. The Riedel and Cody website, which is www.riedelcody.org. Yeah. So okay. it's riedelcody.org. Okay. And what types of information can people find on the Riedel and Cody website? Um, for the for the as far as ma the mission of the charity. Yeah. Types of it? Exactly. The the charity mission on the website is kind of reflective of what the founders wanted when they started the organization. So. They have a section for resources for people that have a, a companion animal diagnosed with cancer. So there are, you know, different links for different information, all sorts of uh, ways to prevent cancer, ways to deal with cancer, different kinds of treatments, different providers. So there's a really nice, robust resource library on the website. Okay. Um, there's also applications for uh, financial assistance. Um, and then there are different pla uh, different kind of news feeds throughout the website talking about what's latest in cancer research, et cetera, treatments, clinical trials, et cetera. So how, I guess, Lauren, how did you come up with the idea of the found, how, the idea of the project and the idea of the foundation? Well, the the Riedel and Cody Fund was started in 2010 okay. by two uh, gentlemen in Fairfield County, David. Uh, Shaman and Mark Tillinger okay. and both of them had uh, dogs diagnosed with cancer but both of them had a perspective of not only wanting to help their own dog but they were compassionate enough to realize that there were a lot of people that had the same diagnosis for their companion animals and they could not afford to treat. The treatment costs can be very expensive and they wanted to do something to help. We have, you know, the same incidence of cancer in animals that we have in people. So one in four companion animals are diagnosed with cancer every year. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so it's a, it's a very serious problem. And, it is. And the treatment costs are high, very high. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, and as far as the guys go with the, with the project, as far as the aspect of animals and this whole wonderful project you're working on, thoughts and ideas that you want to get out to the public? Um, I think the biggest thought and idea that we want is to just get as many people as possible to come to the event. Um, bring like their just, bring their pets as well too. Yep, bring your pets. Yeah. It's a pet friendly dog. event. It's a, a dog friendly. Right? Dog not, friendly not event. Cats. No, 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 no. Yeah, you don't want to. Very, very dog friendly. Exactly. You want to show up with your but cat. But prevention. There, there. I think a lot of the focus too at the event will be on prevention. How you can prevent um, cancer. You know, by you know, looking at what you put on your lawn or looking at what you spray in your house. You know, animals are certainly closer to the ground and have right. a greater chance of seeing the negative results of chemicals and and things that are in the environment that are not only bad for people but obviously bad for animals as well. I was actually going to ask, what are some of the ways that you can prevent cancer with with your animal as far as well, what we goes. see that the, the most common and the easiest things, which are why interesting that we have Mr. Woodford coming for the event, yeah. we have, uh, you know, we look at the quality of the food right. that animals are fed. We look at the quality of the environment, how many toxins and chemicals are either, you know, sprayed from cleaners or, you know, the laundry soap that the, is used for the dog's bed or certainly what goes on the lawn outside that right. dogs walk through or cats walk through. So. You know, any of the things that are environmentally unsafe for us are probably more so unsafe for animals because they are 
closer and they don't have the, you know, the luxury of wearing shoes and socks. You know, they exactly. step on right. they exactly. step on anything with their paws and that's their skin. So Exactly, yeah, and you don't wanna hurt somebody by having having them walk on the walk on the grass and right. then yeah. eat something or swallow something and Yeah. And, or even we were talking about secondhand smoke. Yeah. Animals are just as affected negatively by secondhand smoke as people. Really? Mm -hmm. Wait yeah. I, I Absolutely. Did. See, you guys just told me something. Because I, 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 didn't, I didn't know that the yeah. animals yeah. were affected by secondhand smoke. Absolutely, and I, yeah. guess, I guess how can an animal be affected by secondhand smoke? In the exactly the same the way same. as people. If they're in a room and there's, we see um, the same carcinogens that affect people affect mm -hmm. animals. Um, there's an entire field of study called comparative oncology where okay. we look at and uh, the cancers that affect human beings, the cancers that affect animals, and how they are similar and what we can learn from observing each, each uh, the cancers in each species. Okay. And we're about to actually about to go into a break here in a second, but before we do, let's talk about the, uh, let's mention the event one more time. When and where? May 7th, 11 to 4 p.m. Okay. At Clark's Fire, Clark's Field, Clark's Fireman's Field in, in Saybrook, right across from the pasta. Also, yeah. dog friendly as well. So bring your dog. I was gonna say dog friendly, dog no friendly. cats though. No, no cats. No cats. Bring your dogs. Just, yeah. bring your dogs. No, no cats, just dogs. And it's rain or shine. Yes, please come rain even if it's raining. Exactly. Even if it's raining. Exactly. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully not though. I was gonna say hopefully the weather gods are gonna be good to <laughs> yeah. us. Yeah. We're hoping. It's not gonna, not gonna rain or not. It's not gonna be a hundred degrees. Absolutely. Because that would that would be no fun. And I, we're actually about to go into a break. Would you guys mind sticking around for another segment? Absolutely. Sure. Thank All you right. very much. We'll be right back. Thank you. All right. This is the good job. <laughs> nice job. This is the PSA break. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat, ugly, disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. We're actually sitting here with my panel of experts talking about an event that is coming up in, an, in well, the town of Old Saybrook, but we're going to talk about that coming back. Right now, we're going to watch a short video. My name is Angelica Harlembides. I am an educator and have been for the past 30 years an administrator. Uh, 20 of those years spent here at the Learning Center at Pipers Hill in Stanford, Connecticut. I um, am a Boston native, relocated to Connecticut, and this is where I purchased my first dogs, actually. I had two dogs. Um, the first one, I was very shocked to find out, having never heard of cancer in animals, um, died very quickly. He had um, a very fast-moving cancer and could not be saved, nor did I know that dogs could be helped. Lula had treatment every month, a variety of different chemos we used throughout the 14 months that she survived. She had a good, a good 14 months. I think they were treating me as well in the process. 
I think my greatest fear was that here was somebody that I loved so dearly, and yet I didn't have the, I, I couldn't afford to help her. I had a life-changing experience five years ago. Uh, I, I was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, at the same time, my dog, Riedel, who I had a extraordinary close relationship with, was also fighting cancer. Um, I, I don't believe that I could have gone through the treatment and the process with the optimism that I did that I was going to beat the cancer if it wasn't for my relationship with Riedel and watching her heroism as she went through her treatment. And, and that relationship and that bond that we had got closer through that process and, and fundamentally changed my life forever. What I wanted to prevent was having a loving owner of a dog or cat have to make an awful decision to not treat, to not provide care that would elongate or save the animal's life purely because they absolutely had no resources to provide for that. When I was 29, my mom gave me a Rottweiler puppy for, for my birthday. She allowed me to choose which puppy I wanted. So I came in. I found the puppy, I, I picked up, she had a litter of 12, it was a massive litter. Um, I picked up all of them, interacted with all of them, but there was one female who I would pick up and she would growl at me. I'd put her back down, I'd go around, and I would pick up other dogs and interact with them, and I'd come back to the female, I'd pick her up, and she'd growl at me. So I, of course, took that dog. One of the things that I found the most difficult to deal with was the fact that Cody was the only thing I had left of my mom. So when, when Cody passed away, there was, wasn't, I wasn't just grieving her death, I was also grieving the death of my mom. One of the most remarkable experiences that I've had with the Riedel and Cody Fund is seeing individuals who share that same bond and connection with their dogs and cats that I do. I, I have observed people who have this emotional connection with their animals and embrace them as part of their family as I do. One of the things that makes us unique as a foundation is unlike most nonprofits, we fund treatment from start to finish. And what that means is that pet has every opportunity to be able to be put into a state of remission, giving the most, the highest quality of life and the most amount of time with their owners. In many cases, these pets are like family. Imagine having a son or a daughter and not being able to treat for cancer. Imagine how devastating you would feel not being able to do everything possible to help that pet. This foundation is in place to make sure that no pet owner has to go through that. The absolute hardest thing that we have to deal with at the Riedel and Cody Fund is we have to say no far too often. There are so many more families who need our need, then we have the resources to help. The costs were enormous. There was no way that I could have afforded it. I'm a single head of household. And um, I walked out of there that day knowing that there was somebody that was going to help Lula, and I didn't have to go to bed, and I worried about where the money was going to come from. And it was a lot of money. It was a lot of money, I'm sure. I don't know exactly how much, but I know one thing that I will, I'm going to raise as much as I can, not only to pay back for her, her life, but for others, so I'm emotional about that. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show, and welcome back from the watching the video with us. So I was wondering, guys, maybe we can talk a little bit about the video that we just saw and what exactly was entailed in the video and what the subject of the video was. Lauren? Well, I think the video is really just to show how the organization started, what, okay. what the two founders had in mind for beginning the charity itself, and I think I think for us, the, what's very meaningful about the video is showing 
Angelica Haralambides, who was the first or one of the first applicants that we funded. Mm -hmm. And and she's kind of typical of the people that apply to our fund for okay. um, financial aid, you know, in that she lives by herself and she doesn't have a lot family members uh, that are alive. And she, you know, her dog was her dearest and closest friend. Right. So for her to not be able to pay for treatment for her dog was devastating. And I think the video really shows us the effect, you know, the sobering effect on a pet owner to, you know, be only faced with either euthanizing your dog or yeah. cat or treating. And exactly. Yeah. So when money becomes an obstacle for a decision like that, it's, it's very traumatic. I'm shocked. Yeah, it, de it def definitely is. I'm actually an animal lover and an animal owner myself, and it's like, hmm, okay. Uh, oftentimes, the animals are not old, and in right. fact, they have a very extraordinary quality of life after treatment. Right. So we don't fund treatments, you know, where the the dog or cat, you know, wouldn't do really well that they wouldn't you know, basically thrive after the treatment. The quality of life is very important to us. Um, and, and so what we see is the treatments are allowing you know, companion animals to live many years in, with their families. Exactly, exactly. So what other, what other information do we want to share with our viewers and our listeners about the, found, about the Riedel and Cody and about the event coming up? Uh, I think one thing that we did not touch upon very much was yeah. at the event we have something called the Doggy Fun Zone. Yeah, yeah. That's right. super fun. Um, that is basically a luring course for dogs that they are they chase around a mechanical lure, and it's a nationally recognized custom course. And uh, we hope really? that brings in a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my good. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. I guess I guess how long is the is the course pretty long or is it pretty it's like a hundred feet by 30 feet I, th I okay. think they sent it so it's and it's all there's some agility things mixed in with luring stuff it's for the average dog it's not for okay. dogs that know agility it's just for the average dog. Right. average Joe dog that doesn't right. you know that doesn't have any prior training so I guess it's it's very fun we're excited to see what it's what it's all about because exactly. it looks like it's a lot of fun exactly so again how did the uh, how did the event come to mind for for you guys. I guess it's part of a, your senior project for Old Saybrook High School? Yep. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that as far as the aspect of the idea of how the project came out as far as planning goes and... I think the biggest thing for me at least when thinking of the senior project yep. was my close relationship with animals. Mm -hmm. I, my mom has always been a very big dog lover, so I've always been very interested in dogs. But also the aspect that the cancer brought in because someone in my family was had been touched with cancer, unfortunately. And we kind of wanted to try, both of me and Rob wanted to try to incorporate the two somehow. And when we heard about the Riedel and Cody Fund, we jumped on that opportunity. Rob, you have anything to look at? Yeah, also my family been affected by cancer, both actually. My uh, my dog Sasha was actually affected by cancer twice. Oh no! And yeah, we were able to treat her. That's great. Now now, are you guys getting a pretty good feedback from the community and the town when you guys go out and talk talk up of, talk up the event your event? Have you been to? I guess have you gone to any other? Yeah, we have a, a few sponsors, and we're also in the process of going like around Old Saybrook and the surrounding towns putting up flyers, just getting the word out as much as possible. Nice, very nice. And again, the event is in May. Yep, May, May, May 7th. 7th. Okay. Rain or shine. Rain or, sh rain or shine, and the event is at Fireman's Field in Old mm -hmm. Saybrook, I believe. Yep. Correct. Yep. Correct. Just Across the, from Pasta Vida. Yep. yep. I was gonna say, according to the notes that I'm looking at, but I'm really not looking, I'm going off the top of my head. Now, as far as prevention of cancer for your four-legged friend how, how I guess how important is it to try to obviously if you find out your pet has cancer you're gonna to want to try to get it treated as soon as possible absolutely that's that's the big thing try and get it as early as you possibly can and that's where companies like the Rito and Cody fund help because they will help fund and treat your pet and that's what it's all about helping the dogs so that's exactly what Rito and Cody does is they come and they help 
That's right. All That's right, exactly well, what we do. As well as try to educate the public on how to prevent some cancers that, you know, some are obviously genetic, more genetically prone, but if right. there are things that we can do within the environment of our household or our yards that will, you know, lessen the mm -hmm. opportunity for any kind of carcinogens, it would certainly be worth it for most of us to protect our companion animals. Exactly. And as far as the Riedel and Cody Fund, how, I guess how long have you guys been around? We started in 2010, so we're relatively a new you're re charity. You're, I was going to say you're yeah. all, relative. We're really only a little over five years old, um, although we do we fund nationally. We take applications from around the country. Really? Yeah, we do. Excellent. But before we say goodnight, I want to thank you guys for coming down with me and getting the word spread out. And it sounds like it's going to be a really awesome event. And Thank you very much for having not us. A really course, yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Thank you for having we're us. Glad Pete. to be on the show. Not a problem. Well, on behalf of the panel of experts, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next week.